page 99. 5. The Stereophotogrammetric Survey. Since childhood, all of us, in carrying out any manual operation, must carry out a relief operation, when we identify a point to touch, and a control operation, when we put our hand on the point. Given the frequency and precision with which we carry out these two operations, except for the first few months of life, we can consider ourselves infallible in the reliefs within arm's reach. Stereophotogrammetry takes full advantage of our ability and Maintaining the base distance ratio between the values 0.24 and 0.06, practically between 1 stroke 5 and 1 stroke 20, it offers us within reach the entire three-dimensional photographic model, in scale, of any object and provides us with the equipment needed to measure it with the desired precision. A change that anyone would make to the Kapila method comes from the use of photographic shooting to obtain the two perspectives. Undoubtedly the advantages, deriving from the introduction of photography, are not negligible. Just think of the speed with which the shooting operations can be carried out. But it becomes less simple to check the errors that are committed in the reconstruction of the beams of rays determining the two perspectives. It is comforting to know that most of these errors are systematic, which we can consider the flagship of stereophotogrammetric survey. Theoretically with the introduction of photography, the Kapila Midotto does not undergo substantial changes. 100. To fix the two perspectives it is possible to use one or two cameras, but it is important that it is. The sensitive surface is sufficiently flat. Known, with respect to it, the orientation of the optical axis of the objective. Identified, with sufficient precision. The point of intersection of said axis with the surface itself. Visible, on each frame, the reference system having as its origin the main point. Note, with respect to an absolute reference. The position of the projection center of one of the cameras and, therefore, the orientation of the relative optical axis. Note the position of the projection center, and therefore, the orientation of the relative optical axis of one machine relative to the other. Note the base that is, the distance between the projection centers. The conditions listed above, in practice, allow us to know. The internal orientation of each beam of rays, projecting the image, with respect to the sensitive surface. The external orientation of one of the beams with respect to an absolute reference. The relative orientation of each beam with respect to the other. The base in operational practice we will never be able to know these elements with absolute precision, but, on the basis of relevant needs. It will be important to establish the degree of precision with which they must be determined. The customer of the photogrammetric survey, accustomed to asking a survey, as precise as possible must understand that a high precision can only be achieved with sophisticated equipment highly qualified personnel. Long technical times all this leads to excessively high costs and, more often than not, disproportionate to the purposes for which the relief is intended. Caption. The image, supplied by the camera, is projected upside down and, to use it in the Kapila method, it is necessary to rotate it 180 degrees around the projection axis. Observing it from the side of the transparent support, if it is a negative or a slide, and on the side of the sensitive layer if it was printed by contact or by enlargement. Page 102. 5.1. The three-dimensional optical model. We photograph an object from two points of view and project the two slides simultaneously on the same screen. The two images can overlap only in some points. By varying the convergence of the optical axis of the two projectors, we will be able to make all points coincide on the screen, the images of which appear on both frames. Once the two projectors have been locked so that the points that were furthest away from the camera coincide on the screen, 
we bring the screen closer to the projectors and we will realize that there is a proportionality between the distance between the projectors and the screen and the distance that, during shooting, they had, from the camera, the points that subsequently appear on the screen. To observe, as well as touch the three-dimensional optical model, obtained by the intersection of the corresponding rays, you can use projection with complementary colors such as red and green. After checking that the overlap of the two filters, to be used prevents the passage of visible rays, I place them in front of the projector's objectives in order to distinguish, on the screen, the projected right image, from the right, in red and the image left in green, obviously if we are using black-white slides. By moving a small screen in the field common to the two beams, the areas in which the corresponding beams coincide will appear in gray-black. Let's take two other filters, the same as the previous ones. We have the red one in front of the right eye and the green one in front of the left eye. We verify that the right eye sees only the right image and the left eye only the left image. Caption. For a faithful reconstruction of the three-dimensional optical model. It is essential to have suitable shooting equipment to let us know the orientation of the beams of rays projecting the image and of precisely adjustable projectors. Page 104. We look with both eyes and we will be able, not only to observe the three-dimensional image, but to quickly identify the intersection points of the corresponding rays. Reversing the position of the filters in front of the eyes. The right eye will observe the left image and the eye left the right one. You can. That is, to observe the projected image in pseudostereoscopy. The optical model thus obtained can be. Enlarged, increasing the screen projector distance and vice versa. Elongated, in the direction perpendicular to the screen. Reducing the distance between the projectors and, vice versa. Shortened by increasing the distance itself. Which we will call the projection base. Detached from the screen and brought closer to the projectors. Increasing their convergence. Now, let's try to photograph three-dimensionally. In black-white. A plaster bas relief. Not colored. And project the slides obtained on it. Placing. In the photographic points. Two projectors whose objectives have the same distance focal length of those used in filming with the projectors of the filters, red and green, and by changing their orientation, relative and absolute. We will identify a position where the bas relief will no longer appear colored in red and green, but all in gray. At this point once the position of the projectors has been fixed, we can remove the bas relief and replace it with a block of plaster which we will model until the areas colored in red or green are eliminated. Once the patient work is completed, we will have obtained a faithful reproduction, in one. One scale, of the photographed bas relief, which will be perfectly replaced, even in the position, without its surface having ever been touched. Therefore, among the numerous positions that projectors can assume, there is only one suitable for providing what we can define as the optical cast of the photographed object. To vary the scale of the optical model it will be sufficient to scale the projection base, without altering the internal or external orientation of the beams of rays projecting the slides. The procedure now analyzed, which we will call anaglyph, represents a first way to derive the measurements from a pair of stereo frames. Page 105. Some examples of transformation of the optical model obtainable. Increasing or decreasing the base, with the same main distance and frames. In this case the model is enlarged or reduced, but the proportions remain unchanged. Increasing or decreasing the main distance, with the same base and frames, thus altering the orientation of the projecting rays. In this case the model is lengthened or shortened. Page 106. It is clear that the times required for the reconstruction of the three-dimensional optical model are significantly reduced if you have. 
shooting equipment, suitable for providing the orientation, internal and external, of the beam of rays projecting the image. Return equipment, capable of reconstructing the orientation, with an accuracy not less than that. Provided by the recording equipment, and to record, in a triaxial orthogonal Cartesian reference system, the position of a small screen intended to collect the corresponding rays. 5.2. The normal case. Theoretically, the photogrammetric survey can be carried out by orienting the camera anyway, since, during the return phase, it is always possible to reconstruct the optical model in scale or on the basis of the data provided by the camera itself or, in the absence of these, with the aid of a schematic model obtained with other survey methods. In operational practice, however, we cannot ignore that the reading of the optical model must always be done by man, whose performance depends on the working conditions. An excessive fatigue of the operator's visual system, assigned to the return, can compromise both the time's work, both the quality of the product. To accommodate the habits of our visual system, we can only orientate the cameras so that the frames can be viewed effortlessly. Once again it is appropriate to analyze the behavior of the eyes. By shooting so that the base distance ratio is contained within the previously defined optimal limits. The optical model will always appear to us to be of such size that it can be observed with a distance of not less than 25 centimeters and not more than 1 meter. In these conditions, the optical axis of our eyes, to analyze the model, will move continuously as in reading the pages of a book. It is therefore probable that the brain determines the distances, between the corresponding points, based on the angles of rotation of the same axis. Caption. When we observe a pair of stereo frames, the visual axis of our eyes passing through the corresponding points intersect in points that are further away. The greater the distance of observation. If this is greater than the focal length of the camera used in the second half, the optical model will appear deeper than the original. In practice there is the case of a return made with a longer focal length than that adopted in the second half. Page 108. Any comparison between the sensitive surface of the camera and the retina of the human eye, acceptable for distances such as to allow the immobility of the eyes in observation, is to be discarded. Precisely because of the mobility of the eyeball, and therefore of the retina, whose position is fixed with respect to the optical axis. Wanting to compare our visual system with a photogrammetric shooting system, we will have to consider the beams of rays, projecting the image, consisting of all the positions taken by the optical ocular axis. That said, we can believe that it consists of two hypothetical chambers having fixed relative orientation mutual distance, base, equal to that between the centers of rotation of the eyeballs. Projection centers coinciding with the same centers of rotation. Main axis parallel and orthogonal to the base. Asymmetrical shooting angle and with greater amplitude in the plane containing the main axis. We will take this filming system as a model, which we will call the normal case. Finally, when choosing the camera angle, we should bear in mind that the size of the optical model, reduced in scale, should not be greater than that of an object that can be observed at the same distance and without causing any rotation of the head. 5.3. The mobile brand. The current diffusion of the photogrammetric method is certainly not due to the discovery of the method itself, which for some decades has passed the century of life, but rather to the arrival, on the market, of sophisticated equipment, which make it particularly simple, rapid and accurate. To obtain the graphs in scale from a pair of frames, we must limit ourselves to guiding the movements on the optical model of our attention that will be attracted by a reference element called mobile brand. To make this possible, simply move a reference on each frame by means of commands. 
when both references coincide with corresponding points. In stereoscopic observation, the brain receives a single image of them, called precisely. Caption. To the right the movements of the mobile brand as a function of the corresponding ones of the references on the frames. For simplicity of representation we indicate with M1, M2, O1, O2 respectively the movable references on the frames, left and right, and the relative projection centers, with M, X, Y, Z. The mobile brand or its movements in a Cartesian reference having the origin in 0, 1, the Y axis in the left direction of recovery. The x-axis according to the joining of the two projection centers and the z-axis facing upwards. Page 110. In the direction parallel to the shooting base, by means of a command that makes the references move in synchrony along the abscissa axis of the Cartesian system fixed on the frame. In the direction of the optical axis of the chambers by means of a command that varies the mutual distance of the same references. In the direction orthogonal to the previous ones, moving, in synchrony, the references in the direction of the axis of the ordinates of the Cartesian system of the frames. It is evident that, when the references are on corresponding points, the mobile brand will appear resting on the corresponding point of the optical model and can be moved on this with an appropriate coordination of the three commands. This is a second way to obtain the measurements of the pair of frames, recording the subsequent positions of the mobile brand, by means of the pairs of coordinates of the two references on the frames. 5.4. Mistakes. The precision of the stereophotogrammetric survey is essentially a function of the shooting distance and, on average, is of the order of one ten thousand of it. Identifying all types of errors, which can influence it and, therefore, resorting to the relative theory, is not an enterprise that we will face, but, if we want to try some exercises, we can make some considerations. The main distance even if it coincides with the focal distance, varies from room to room, if determined with high precision. The optical axis, in general, does not pass through the main point and its orientation, with respect to the projection plane, varies with the variation of the position of the objective. The image is distorted, according to the quality of the lens. The sensitive surface is not perfectly flat. Caption. For the measurement of these distances, with sufficient guarantees of precision even for those who are not expert in the survey, there are now electronic devices, easy to use, capable of to measure, with very high precision, the distance between the axis of the instrument and a reflector placed in the chosen point. On the right is the WRLDDI4 infrared distance meter, mounted on theodolite which has a maximum range of 2 km with an average error of 5 mm km. Among the accessories it has a keyboard for viewing the distance, oblique or reduced, the height difference and the coordinate differences, and a universal field recorder for the automatic transfer of data to the computer. Page 111. The image, which we see on the negative or on the slide, does not correspond to the projected one. Due to possible slippage of the sensitive layer with respect to the support or due to the deformation of the latter both as a result of the development process and due to particular conditions of work. The situation obviously worsens if we use copies obtained by contact printing or even by enlargement. During the return phase, the image is further distorted by the optical reading system. The influence of the errors, connected to the reading of the coordinates on the frames, is strictly linked to the scale of the frame itself. The determination of the main point and the reference system on the frames should not be underestimated. Finally, we take for granted the inevitable errors deriving from the determination of the external orientation and the reconstruction of the optical model. In reality, the situation is not as catastrophic as it might appear.
In the return, we can distinguish two faces, the reconstruction of the optical model and the survey of the same. Page 112. In the first phase we rely on the pair of frames, which, once developed, we will treat so that we can consider them non-deformable. A limited number of control points, determined by another method and with an accuracy at least equal to that required for the photogrammetric survey. At the end of this phase, we can already realize the precision achievable with the equipment used and with the working method. Following, in the second phase, we will find the problems existing in all the direct surveys and the accuracy essentially depends on the operator, who, among other things, performs a completely subjective filtering of the survey. Considering also the extremely long times of this second phase, it should be done only with the direct collaboration of the user of the survey if you do not want to risk that surface operators. With the help of automatic tracers, can perform superficial analyses, but expensive, of the optical model. 5.5. The control points. In the hypothesis that the images, fixed on the frames, present a negligible distortion, for the construction of the optical model. The problem of the orientation of the frames remains, which is solved, using other methods, with the detection of a sufficient number of control points. Logic dictates that these points are the vertices of a pyramid with a square base, whose height is arranged in the direction of the optical axis and a diagonal of the base in the direction of joining the recovery points. In operating practice, however, any triad of segments are chosen, orthogonal to each other, such as to affect the common part of the frames. The measurement of the lengths is done directly or indirectly depending on whether the endpoints are accessible or not. Caption The Wild P31 terrestrial metric camera, with interchangeable optics, uses flat sheets or films of the 10x12 cm format. It can rotate, by predetermined angles, around the axis, horizontal and vertical, of the support and around the recovery axis. For orientation of the support, it is equipped with a small telescope with 8x magnification and with a field of view of 10 meters over 100 meters. Page 113. It is useless to detect an excessive number of control points in the hope of guaranteeing greater precision for the optical model. The superfluous points, assuming that they have been detected with very high precision, can only inform us about the degree of precision of the model, but they cannot increase it. In any case, care must be taken not to adapt the optical model to a schematic model determined by control points detected with doubtful precision. 5.6. The metric chamber. A camera is called a metric camera when it is able to provide data relating to internal and external orientation. While it cannot be excluded that any camera can be transformed into a metric camera, it is necessary to specify that, in general, this type of camera is specially designed and built with particular care. Page 114 Caption In a metric room due to the internal orientation, we speak of the interchangeable machine body rather than optics. On the left are the three possibilities offered by the P31, the super wide angle, wide angle and normal cameras respectively with 45 mm, 100 mm and 200 mm lenses on 92 by 118 mm, 83 by 117 mm and 83 by 116 mm image format. The second and third also have a decentralization of 15 and 12 mm respectively. Page 115 Caption The possibility to rotate the camera around its optical axis allows an optimal exploitation of the frame, which, depending on the subject's shot, can be arranged with the longer side of the frame in a horizontal or vertical position. With the exception of the wide-angle fender, 
The P-31 can also be focused on short distances with the addition of spacer rings. Page 116. The data it is able to provide are Main distance, which is determined by the manufacturer with an accuracy of 1 stroke 100 of a millimeter and, in most cases, shown on the frame. Main point, identified by the intersection of the four connecting marks of reference, fixed to the support framework of the sensitive material and shown on each frame. It should be remembered that the main point is the point where the projecting beam perpendicular to the sensitive surface, and that only in the ideal case coincides with the optical axis of the objective, meets the surface itself. Inclination of the optical axis of the objective on the horizontal plane. Angle formed by the same axis with the base. Page 117 Caption On the left a pair of frames obtained with the normal P31, on each of which the main distance, 201.89, the progressive number of the frame. The four reference marks and the main decentralized point are readable. When shooting with long rooms it is necessary to pay attention to close-ups, which often make a large area of the frame unusable. In the case in question, the lower area of the frames disturbs the stereoscopic vision of the hole. On the right is the camera used for shooting. Page 118 Caption The use of self-propelled aerial platforms frees the problem. The choice of point of view, from any type of conditioning and ensures, with a minimum of organization. A considerable saving of time especially in the relief of urban centers. Frontal shots are necessary when, during the restitution phase, you do not want to run the risk of encountering gray areas. In photogrammetry we can only measure what appears in the photograph and, in the shooting from the ground. The protrusion of a cornice is sufficient to obstruct the visibility of large areas of the elevation. To the right two more examples of optimal shooting. In the first case, a trellis structure was used. In the second, an elevating platform with a telescopic system. Page 120. For the exact determination of the resume point, the plumb line or optical plummet of the tripod on which the camera is placed is used. Finally, in the base of the chamber there is a telescope with which it is possible to orient it with respect to the other station point and determine the relative height difference. In the normal case the recovery operation with the metric chamber is particularly simple and does not exceed 20 minutes. The choice of the station points, where the two tripods will be placed must be made keeping in mind the distance which must be between 1 stroke 5 and 1 stroke 20 of the average shooting distance the shot which in addition to allowing the survey of the details concerned at least in the common area must not contain close-ups that can disturb the stereoscopic vision the projection plane which will be orthogonal to the direction of the optical axis of the camera and in the normal case, therefore, will contain both points of recovery. Caption. The metric Tanara Wild P32 can be adapted either to the support of the P31 by means of a connection ring, or, as in this one case, on the telescope of the Ardalite. A feature of this camera is that it can also use 6x9 cm roll film with an image format of 60x80 mm. The focket is 64 mm, the standard focus is on 25 m, but with spacer rings it can be reduced at a very short distance. Page 122. In outdoor shooting, in the presence of the sun, in order to avoid a different length of the shadows on the two frames, which would disturb the stereoscopic vision. It is always advisable to reduce the interval between the two shooting shots to the bare minimum. The measurement of the height difference between the bases of support of the room can be made, with the double reading method, using the alignment telescope and a millimeter target. 
In the case of short distance surveys, the measurements, both of the base and of the control distances, can be taken directly, of course, with the necessary precision. In the case of surveys at a great distance, however, topographic survey will be indispensable. Page 123. Caption. Left. For the P-32, Wild Heerbrug produces a basic support, for shooting at a very short distance, with which it is possible. Fix the two electromagnetically synchronizable chambers at a distance of 20, 30, 40 centimeters and with a larger side from the horizontal or vertical frame. Right. The stereotric chamber WLLDC120 used, in this case, for the relief of the dolmen of the Chianca in Bisegl, BA. Page 124. 5.7. The stereometric chamber. When the recording equipment provides us with a single shot, the stereo image in scale, it takes the name of stereometric camera. It is built in full compliance with the normal case rigidly connecting two metric chambers equal to the ends of a base, which can be fixed or variable. The purpose of this type of equipment is to obtain particularly rapid measurements, but with good guarantees of precision. The fixed relative orientation of the two cameras allows you to impress, only once, only a couple of frames with the control points and use it for all returns. Both the chair of architectural photogrammetry and the photogrammetric unit of the Bari traffic police are equipped with a wild C120 stereometric chamber, whose characteristics are Fixed base of 120 cm, 64 degrees horizontal shooting range Asymmetrical vertical shooting range, with 17 degrees 20 upwards and 32 degrees downwards and vice versa if inverted. Distortion less than 4 m variable aperture between f8 and f32. Page 125. Captions. Left. An image of the first exercise of the Bari traffic police with the wild C120 stereomatic chamber. Right. An image of Switzerland in the 1940s. The Bern police have used photogrammetry since 1934. In a letter sent to the Wild Society of Herod, Herr Muller, Chief of the Criminal and Security Police of Bern, congratulated, not surprisingly, on the negligible maintenance required by the photogrammetric instruments in 15 years of work, despite the fact that the shooting were to be exposed often and for a long time to rain or snow. Page 127. Caption. Thursday the 24th of April 1947 at 6.29 on the Eastern Platz of Basralia. Two trams. They collided. A third was involved in the accident. Arriving at that time, there were six dead, 64 injured, more or less serious, and the Uranus damage was estimated between 150,000 and 200,000 for. Thanks to the stereophotogrammetric equipment, it was possible to finish the surveys at 9 a.m., so as to reopen the traffic. The square for 9.30 a.m. Relief with techniques. Traditional, the relazrone is dated the 5th of May 1949, would have blocked traffic, in this important road junction, all morning. Page 128. The control panel of the C-120. 1. Socket for flash synchronization. 2. Exposure time regulator. 3. Iris regulator. 4. Lever to load the shutter. 5. Indicator light for the green light when shooting. 6. 3.15A fuse 7. Socket for the connection cable to the accumulator. 8. Vertical column locking lever. 9. Crank for moving the stereocarnera in height. 10. Spirit level 11 viewfinder indicating decentralization and shooting range at an average distance of 15 RN. On the tilting head of the C120, the level, orthogonal to the direction of the base, 
can be rotated so as to always remain horizontal, regardless of the inclination of the stereo camera. Page 129. The top and the transport case of the C120 and the case for the transport of the Wild C40 stereometric chamber, identical to the C120 but with a 40 cm base. Page 130. Compare shutter with the possibility of installation and shutter speeds from 1s to 1500s. Image format of 60x 80mm with longer horizontal side. Horizontal distance of the reference marks of the switchboard of 75mm. Viewfinder with indication of decentralization and the average common field. Shooting height. From the tripod support base. Variable from 1.5 to 2.5 meters. Possibility of tilting the chambers. Up or down. By 10 degrees. 30 degrees. 60 degrees. 80 degrees. 90 degrees. Weight of the chamber. Without tripods. 13 kilograms. Built for the detection of road accidents. The C120 has been successfully used in the architectural survey thanks to the adoption of the tilting head. The combination of decentralization, downwards or upwards, with the various inclinations, allows optimal exploitation of the frame. Page 131 Caption On the occasion of the earthquake of the 23rd of November 1980, the photogrammetric unit of the Vigili Urbani of Bari carried out numerous surveys of monuments damaged by the earthquake. Left, the relief of the Church of Balvano, PZ. At the time of the earthquake movement, a religious function was in full swing in the church and the main facade collapsed on the crowd trying to go outside. Right, the view of the dome of the Chisa Madre in Pignola, PZ. Stereometric frames are particularly useful in analyzing the lesions that are formed in the structures of buildings. Page 132 Caption Relief of the Church of S. Rocco in Pignola, PZ. Archiving the status of places has value not only for documentation purposes. Historical, but especially for educational purposes. In the analysis of the behavior of similar structures in the event of an earthquake. Page 133 Caption Relief of the Convent of Pesca Pagano, PZ. Among the benefits of stereophotogram and a trico relief, there is also that of being able to be made with bad weather conditions. Many surveys of the earthquake zones were made in the presence of wind, snow, ice, and rain. When the umbrella was not enough to protect the stereo camera lenses from wind rain. These were protected with makeshift means and discovered only at the moment of shooting. Page 134 Caption Mother Church in Pesca Pagano, PZ The possibility, offered by stereometric photograms, of analyzing architectural details that escape direct vision. Always recommends that the status of the places be surveyed before the demolition work is completed by man. Page 135 Caption A phase of the surveys carried out in Laoni. In emergencies such as those caused by the earthquake, the lack of an adequate number of specialized technicians requires a quick check of the shoring works which, if poorly carried out, can increase the risk of collapses in the event of further shocks. Steria from Grimelria ensures both a dimensional analysis of the structures built and a control over time, even at a distance of many kilometers. Page 136 Caption Relief of the Mother Church in Muro Lucano the Styria photogrammetric survey, while significantly reducing the risks that any relief technique would entail in such cases, requires the presence of personnel capable of using extremely delicate equipment in working conditions that are anything but comfortable. Page 137 Caption In the absence of self-propelled aerial platforms, 
The recording equipment can only be placed on the roofs and in these cases the risks it runs should not be underestimated. Since it must be transported without custody. Page 138 Caption On the occasion of the construction of the Diocesan Museum of Bari, it was started a photogrammetric catalogue of sacred furnishings. In addition to offering the possibility of documenting mobile cultural assets in the process of disappearance, a similar Catalog is particularly useful for those who wish to carry out a detailed dimensional analysis of the objects exhibited in the museum, but not accessible in the photo. The wild C40 stereometric flesh used by the unit. Photogrammetry of the Bari Brigade for such research. To the right, an example of a census and cataloging of movable cultural heritage made in 1979 with the stereometric chamber C120. The objects were arranged in rows and columns, on a chessboard, and identified, for each card, with a number and a letter of the alphabet. Page 140. The reference system in which the image of the photographed object is fixed, has its origin in the projection center of the left camera, the x-axis in the direction of the base, the y-axis along the shooting axis of left and the z-axis, in the remaining direction, upwards. The recovery operation, with said apparatus, is reduced to positioning of the tripod with rough orientation of the base of attack of the chamber. Arrangement of the room on said base. Precision orientation, by means of two orthogonal levels, of the same. Determination of the frame insertion of the plate holder frames. Shutter and diaphragm adjustment. Shutter loading tensioning of the system which fixes the photographic film on the image holder panel. Verification of orientation. Photo shoot the chamber is equipped with two safety indicator lights, one of which is red, concerning the electrical operation of the appliance, the other, green, comes on when the shutter is charged and the negatives perfectly adhere to the support. Page 141 Caption In the relief of objects with predominantly vertical development. The wild C120 stereometric chamber can be arranged with a vertical base. With the only drawback that in the phase of rendering the reality it will appear rotated by 90 degrees. In the photo on the left, the relief with vertical base of the Rock Church Madonna della Verta in the Sassi district of Matera. Right, the C120 placed on a floating platform in Venice. Page 142 Caption Shooting, with wild C40 stereometric chamber, and return, in original 110 scale, of a simulated criminal case. The use of stereophotogrammetric survey in criminology, in addition to the advantages of the large amount of objective information, which it is able to store, takes on particularly interesting aspects if we think about the use of particular emulsions, such as those sensitive to infrared. Page 143 Caption The wild P30 Phototiardolite, equipped with a metric chamber with a focal length of 165mm and a 15x 10cm plate format. Among the advantages, it offered the possibility of a measurable rotation of the chamber with respect to the theardolite. Born for surveys at a great distance, it allowed a rotation of the chamber, around a horizontal axis, of 7 grams upwards and 7 grams, 14 grams, 21 grams downwards. The time required for each restart, including setting up and dismantling the equipment, does not exceed 10 minutes. Apart from the simplicity and rapidity of the shooting operations, the stereometric chamber becomes very useful in cases where the shooting point is not fixed. This is the case of shooting taken from a helicopter or floating platform. In these cases, the orientation of the optical model, 
with respect to the external reference, must be done by identifying any points on the frame that may be considered fixed. 5.8. The Phototiardolite. In the case of surveys at a great distance, that is when the survey of the base and of the control points must be read with topographical methods, the metric chamber is coupled and a theodolite, with which both the external orientation of the chamber and the base and checkpoints. Page 144 Caption A shooting exercise in Conversano, BA in the year of activation of the course photogrammetric techniques applied to urban planning and architecture. In filming, with a very small base, the theodolite was blocked at 90 degrees with respect to the camera and played the simple role of guarantor of the normal case. The recovery operation, including the assembly and disassembly of the equipment, even in the case of a single operator, required a time not exceeding half an hour. Page 145 Caption Explorers particularly appreciate the numerous advantages of the Styria photogrammetric survey. The Austrian expedition exploration PAMI 75 was equipped with wild P-32 terrestrial cameras. Below, a phase of the recovery with the wild P-30 phototiardolite. On the recovery card, the operator must also report the relative orientation of the chamber. Page 146. For the use of the resulting instrument, called phototiardolite, a good knowledge of topographical relief is essential, otherwise there is the risk of adapting, in the return phase, the optical model, probably precise, to a schematic model of dubious precision. 5.9. The use of the common camera. Far from wanting to encourage its use in a possible documentation center, the use of your own camera, to carry out the Styria photogrammetric survey, represents a suitable solution to bring down the last diaphragm still existing between producers and users of the survey we are dealing with. The modern camera, with which the ancient photogrammeters would have worked miracles, represents the only bridge for the potential client, who, as a student, in a school that will never entrust him with a metric room, he can use it to familiarize himself with the technique and understand the theory through practice. As a professional, he will see in it a very useful tool for finalizing the recovery. By means of it, you can decide on the shot, the focal length, the sensitive material, the lighting etc. reserving the resolution of those strictly technical problems for the photogrammeter and saving them valuable time to the benefit of their own economy. A recipe for making a Styria photogrammetric survey with the camera does not exist. It corresponds to that famous treasure, which an old man, dying, said was buried in a small field left in inheritance. The sun searched for him in vain shattering the smallest clods of the soil, and did not understand the lesson until the copious harvest. Caption. In surveying exercises with common cameras, it is advisable to operate on regular structures of known size, in order to facilitate both checking the survey and positioning the cameras. The photo on the right shows a two-chamber camera made with Minolto XG1 reflex cameras with 24x 36mm format and 45mm focal length. The two luminaires were connected by means of an aluminum L bar, 135cm long, on which two pairs of holes were drilled at a distance of 40 and 120cm. The object of the survey was the portico of a steel structure. With pillars placed at regular intervals of 6 meters the position of the objectives was determined on a nylon thread, stretched in a span and obviously eliminated at the time of shooting. The negative, 24.44 x 36.16 mm, was measured with precision and was enlarged 10 times, to facilitate the reading of the coordinates. Page 147 Caption the main distance was made to coincide with the focal distance, which, following the enlargement of the frame, 
went from 45 mm to 45 cm. The main point was determined on the basis of the flight of control aims, placed on the pillars. Page 148 Caption In contravention of photogrammetric laws the students push the maximum range of the double chamber, 120 cm base, from 24 to 60 m. Going from a percentage error of 0.45% to a maximum error of 2% and, taking a look at the data sheet of the measures obtained. One wonders if it was appropriate to rely on the regularity of the structure for checking the survey. Page 149 Caption On the right, the recovery form set with excessive pessimism, if we consider, on the one hand, the results achieved and on the other. The adoption of the term stereoscopic instead of stereophotogrammetric. 150 Caption A shot with a large format single camera. In the absence of regular structures, the control network was built with the help of a team. Page 151 In the common camera nothing is defined. The main distance, even when, with focus on infinity, coincides with the focal length of the lens, it is hardly known with the precision of the millimeter. When shooting nearby objects, you can measure the progress of the optical tube, to add to the focal length, but with what precision? Yes you can get it, with the similarity of triangles, photographing an element of known length, arranged in a direction parallel to the frame and measuring the shooting distance and the length of the image, but will we obtain a higher precision than the previous one? The main point can be identified with the intersection of the diagonals of the frame, printed in full. But is it really sure that the supporting frame of the negative is centered with respect to the center of projection and, therefore, to the main ray? The optical axis of the lens should not deviate much from the main beam because the manufacturer has an interest in inscribing the frame in the base circle of the cone image, but, in focusing, does the orientation remain fixed? For the external orientation we can rely on the parallelism between the sensitive surface and the back of the machine, but if this is flat, what conditions exist? To read the coordinates of the corresponding points on the frame, we can enlarge it, together with the main distance so as to use the millimeter line. But should the distortions determined by the enlarger be added to those already existing due to the fault of the machine? Using the most disparate expedients, the students have always achieved more than satisfactory results. Page 152 5.10 The relief with the stenopeic forum Resuming the pinhole in an era in which there are those who present remote sensing as a world could method, can be, at least, scandalous. But there are problems that perhaps modern technology has overlooked and which therefore can only be solved with ancient methods. For the prior verification of the insertion into the environment of any urban or architectural project, there is a stereometric photomontage thanks to which it is possible to observe the environment itself stereoscopically, modified by the hypothetical intervention. To achieve this, it is necessary to have two stereometric pairs of frames, one relating to the environment and the other to the design model, having, with the due scale ratio, the same base and corresponding points of recovery. The pair of frames, concerning the environment, should be part of the archive of a documentation center for the protection of the territory. Or it may be the result of a recovery aimed at landscape constraints. Made with a metric chamber, for obvious reasons of speed, precision and cataloging, it determines the points of recovery in the base. For the realization of the photomontage, it must be returned, in the scale of the model. In order to identify the area concerned by the project planimetric and altimetrically and the two points of recovery. 
On the schematic survey the model must be arranged and stereophotogrammetrically detected from the two predetermined points of recovery. The difficulties arise right at this stage. In fact, for this recovery, the chamber must allow the identification of the projection center in order to position it in the predetermined shooting points. Be oriented as needed have such a depth of field to reproduce the whole model clearly, despite the reduced shooting distance. Have such a depth of focus that the main distance can be varied to obtain the frame in the desired scale. Ensure the precise measurement of the base, despite the reduction in scale. Page 153. A two-bedroom apartment with variable base, with pinhole, made of welded metal and of which we have already seen a test frame. The main distance is 64 mm, with 76 by 76 mm image format. The latter, thanks to the great depth of focus, can be increased up to the stop 23 by 23 cm with the addition, on the side. Rear of the chamber, of a frame frame in the form of a pyramid trunk. The pinhole, with sharp edges, was made by crossing four pieces of razor blade. The main point is identified by means of two wires stretched in front of the negative and automatically reported, on exposure, on the frame. The interior of the rooms has been painted in matte black to avoid harmful reflections. Although the absolute orientation is neglected in this type of exercise, the double chamber has been equipped with set screws for rough corrections of its orientation. Page 154. A similar metric chamber, specially designed and built, would risk remaining at the prototype level, with a cost so high as to reassure those technicians, who can hardly present a project with plans elevations and some sections. The metric chamber with pinhole can be made, with the desired precision, within the same model laboratory and has negligible costs. The projection center coincides with the same pinhole and can be positioned at the desired point. The scale of the frame can be varied by moving the support frame of the negative and, therefore, increasing or reducing the main distance. Taking care of the parallelism between the hole holder plane and the film holder surface, the main point can be identified on the perpendicular lead from the center of the hole to them. But in any case we can also build the chamber calibration bench. If, then, we want to try to carry out surveys at a great distance, the problem is simplified considerably, because we can use the habitable metric chamber. For such observations it is sufficient. Identify, in one or two environments, two points of recovery, whose mutual distance is between 1 stroke 5 and 1 stroke 20 of the distance of the object to be detected, from which, of course, the same is visible. Arrange, in said points, two plates, possibly coplanar, containing the pinhole. Choose the frame scale obtain the value of the main distance, reducing the shooting distance in the frame scale. Arrange the image holder plane, parallel to the door hole plane with the main point, identified by four reference marks, on the perpendicular from the center of the hole. Obscure the environment and turn on the safety light. Place the sensitive surface on the image holding surface, in the area that interests us and let the exposure time pass. If we took care to bring two basins with the respective development and fixing solutions into the chamber, we will be able to immediately develop the negatives and verify the success of the survey. Page 155 Caption In the case in question, a base of 171 mm and a main distance of 212 mm has been adopted. In order to increase the field of recovery of the double chamber, the sensitive material of the 24x18 cm format has been decentralized towards the outside of the base. The main points, determined geometrically on the inner wall of the room, by means of a grid traced at the time of construction, are identified on the frame by the intersection of four references. 
manually reported with the pencil on the sensitive sheet after it has been inserted into the chamber itself. The images, which we see, used for the return, obtained directly on sensitive paper, are negative. The maximum percentage error encountered was 1% graphically, and 0.5% analytically. Page 156. In the case of isolated monuments or urban centers, for whose relief it is difficult to find the two environments, we can resort to one or two tents, according to the size of the base. Definitely such an operation will make ironic smiles appear on the face of the photogrammeter or traditional detector, but, regardless of the fact that we do all the operations in the dark, we try to give them satisfaction. At the photogrammeter we can point out that the cost of a metric camera alone far exceeds that of the whole operation, but we do not tell him that we are not willing to repeat the experiment. To the traditional detector, we can send an invitation to repeat our survey with its methods. L in any case, the habitable metric chamber is able to provide us with negatives that can reach and exceed the image format of 1x2 meters free from the distortions deriving from the camera and magnifier optics and on which we can read the coordinates with the millimeter scale. Caption. A metric frame of a surface, flat and vertical, obtained by means of a habitable metric camera, with scale frame priority shooting. The pinhole was applied to the window frame of a suitably darkened room. A vertical screen, intended to collect the overturned image of the facade of the building facing it, was placed at a distance, from the hole, equal to the road width reduced in 150 scale. The detail to be detected has been identified on the projected image, obviously in 150 scale, and sensitive material has been applied in this area. The exposure time was about half an hour, having the operator decided to use sensitive orthochromatic material, to take advantage of a sufficient safety light. Page 157 Caption The central window was chosen as the control element, measured with the metric tape in width and height. The maximum percentage error and result less than 1% respectively 0.86% and 0.92%, despite the presence in front of the hole, made with four pieces of razor blade, of glass, certainly not of an optical type. The not extremely precise measurement of the shooting distance. The imperfect parallelism between the sensitive surface and the photographed surface.